Hello Painter, in this video we're going to show you how to paint a room in 10 simple steps. So the first step in painting a room is you want to gather all your furniture, you want to get it away from the walls, at least 4 feet away from the walls or out of the room completely where it will give you uh, easy working space, you're not going to get paint on your furniture, the furniture is not going to be in your way. If you can't get all the furniture out of the room, just try to get it to the center of the room and get it four feet away from the walls because you got to cut in your ceilings and you need a ladder to do so. So step number two is you're going to gather all your supplies together. Once I got myself some working space in this room, I was able to get everything out of this room. There wasn't very much stuff, so I got myself a good clean room with no furniture in it. I'm going to lay down a drop cloth and that's going to be where I'm going to begin laying out my supplies so I can begin working. I'm going to set a drop cloth down. That's where my paint's going to go and all my tools because then I want to get any paint on the carpet. Then I'm going to begin the next step. So in order to begin this painting process, you want to have some good quality painting tools. I'm getting all my tools together. I set a drop cloth down. I'm going to begin covering this whole entire room with drop cloths and begin the masking process. But I start off, there's a few essential tools you're going to need. And one is a cutting bucket with a roller and a brush. So I've got myself a, this, I like a two gallon cutting bucket. And I just use a one gallon grid inside the bucket. I like a three inch angled bristle brush right here to do all my painting with on interior painting. I use a four inch roller with a three eighths inch map. That's my cut in setup. On a small room like this, I don't need a really large roller like an 18 inch roller. I can just use a nine inch roller. So I got myself a nine inch pan with just a throwaway liner so I don't have to worry about cleaning my pan. Got myself a nine inch roller with a three eight, three eight inch nap, uh, nap cover on there. Got some holes in the wall, so I'm going to be spackling the holes in the walls there. I got a hand masker right here with one inch tape and nine inch paper that we're going to be running around to protect our floors and protect our blinds and stuff with. The tape we're going to be using, I use frog tape a lot, and then I use 3M2021 inch tape on my interior masking. Got myself a spackle knife to spackle any of the holes. I've got a flathead screwdriver because I got to remove the switch blades. If I'm going to be caulking my trim, doing our caulking method, I'll be using a caulking gun. Here we've got wood trims, so we're not going to be doing any, any of the um, caulking on the wood trim. So we're just going to be using frog tape, but a lot of times we're using a caulking gun. I've got a lot of drop cloths. I use the plastic runners and the actual canvas style drop cloths. Another thing you're going to need is a ladder. So that's kind of some of the basic tools. I also keep myself a razor knife or a snap knife because if there's any furniture in here, we want to cover it with plastic. We use 9x400 plastic. I always got myself a 5-in-1 tool so I can open the paint and do any scraping if I need to. And then I typically carry around a duster brush just to dust off the baseboards, tops of the, the the door jams and window trim. Then I use myself a pair of rubber gloves so I don't get any paint on my hands. So there you have it. There's some of the essential tools. All the tools and accessories that I use and like, I keep them down in the video description. You can always find them down there. So um, check out the video description or you can find them on my tool store at theidahopainter.com. But here we go. Let's get going to the next step. So step number three was getting our drop cloths all laid out. We got them all laid out on this floor the best we can. We don't have any furniture to work around, so we got them all laid out. And now step number four is masking the room. We're gonna be using nine inch paper, one inch tape to mask around our baseboard to give a little added protection for anything where the baseboards are, or the drop cloths are up close to the baseboards. We're gonna be putting some masking on our window sills, and then we're gonna roll up our blinds run a piece of masking over the top of those blinds so no paint will drip on those because we'll be rolling our ceilings. So we're going to start this process. This is step number four. As part of step number four, we're going to run around our one inch tape. We've got our drop cloths down, we've got our masking paper down. And we're going to run our one inch tape along our baseboards, door trim, and our window trim.
So once step number four is done, I'm gonna move on to step number five, and that's removing switch plates and spackling the holes in the walls. So you got switch plates right here. I wanna remove all these switch plates. They're very simple to re remove. I'm just using a flathead screwdriver. Just gonna remove the switch plate, put it in a bucket. That way we can paint around it. You don't wanna to try to cut in around the switch plates. So now I'm getting ready to do the spackling. Got some few holes up here. We've got some lightweight spackling and a flexible spackle knife right here to do the spackling. I like lightweight spackling because it's gonna dry really fast. Got some small holes, just gonna spackle them, wipe the spackling out with my knife, wipe around it, and it's gonna dry really fast. We want something that's gonna dry fast because this room's not gonna take me more than four hours to paint this room. So I gotta have a spackling that's gonna dry fast. So step number six, is rolling the first coat on the wall. So we're gonna start rolling our first coat. We got this thing all masked off. We're gonna roll a first coat. We don't want it to be really heavy because we want it to dry really fast. We've got the heat turned up. We're gonna get what we call a skin coat on here and our final coat will be our heavy coat. So here we go with the first coat, step number six. So we've got our skim coat, we've ran around skim coat this thing. It's gonna dry really fast. Once that's dry, we begin our cut-in process. We'll be cutting in the ceilings, we'll be cutting in the corners, and gonna roll around our switch plates, light switches, and then we will be doing our cut-ins along our baseboards and trim. And while that's wet, then you're gonna go over it with your second coat. So step number seven is doing our cut-ins. So here we go. Okay, we're working right along doing our cut-ins and we're gonna start step number eight now and that's rolling our second coat on our walls. And this is, there's a lot of different ways you can do this and just depends on how many people you have working with you, if you're by yourself or if you've got wood trim that you're, um, or you got painted trim that you're caulking. And so there's a lot of different methods. I've got a bunch of different videos out there showing you different methods of doing this. On this right here, we got wood trim. We're not caulking it. We just got the tape right up next to the wood trim. So we're doing our cut ends and then we're going back and rolling our second coat. So we're applying the second coat right now. And once again, this is how you roll walls fast. If you want to roll the wall fast, use an 18 inch roller. So now we're on to step number nine, and that's pulling this masking. Once again, this is a crucial step. You don't want to let your paint or caulking and paint dry. So I'm gonna begin pulling all this, all the masking off, step number nine, and I'm working in this room by myself right now, so I'm just gonna pull off this, this section right here. Now the final step, step number 10, is doing the touch-ups and clean-up. I'm gonna begin cleaning all this stuff up, but, but before I clean it up, I got two coats on my walls. I know that's good and, and done, but I, do, I try to do my cut-ins all around my doors, windows, baseboards, and ceilings all in one coat. And so I do it really heavy. So all I gotta do is go back and just look for cut or look for touch-ups in those areas, and then pick up all the drop cloths, move out of here, and I'm gonna clean my brushes and rollers. And that's a very fast, easy process to do. It only is gonna take me about 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> 